So, Spirit of the Living God, I welcome you in this chapel. I stand in your power and your authority. I pray that you speak through me. Move in this place. Have your way. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come in our lives, in our churches, in our communities, in our nations. Amen. I'll be reading, I'll uh, sharing with you the scripture from the book of Matthew, Matthew 9, verse 9 through 10. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciple. Today we are celebrating our 50th year anniversary. This is a great season for us. Our theme this year is celebrating God's faithfulness, commemorating 50 years of existence. During the time of celebration, we are reminded to often remember the leaders, the founders, the visionaries who have gone ahead of us, such as A.J. Gordon, Harold John Okenge, and others who have responded to the call when God said, follow me. In doing so, they have embraced their assignment in this season and establishing our beloved institution the Garden Conwell Theological Seminary, with the goal and the purpose of equipping men and women in practical religious work, I'm quoting, so that they may bring Christ to all the world, end of quote. As a result, we are here because of their obedience, because of their commitment to God to follow him. Likewise, as seminarian, faculty, staff, or spouse, wherever you are, you are invited to follow him. And I would like to speak with you briefly on the title of my topic, Follow Me in All Seasonal Assignments. Follow me is a command that God is giving us. In the text, we see that Matthew responded. He did not have time to debate. He did not have time to negotiate like many of us or to question. He got up and he followed Christ. And this is the time in our season that God is calling us to follow him. And if we are to look at creation, the process of creation, we look at creation goes to many stages, that God went to various stages when he was creating the earth and everything that we're enjoying today. And for, our, and for those of us who live in New England, we truly experience all four seasons. We go from summer, fall, winter, and spring. Just as nature is shaped by season, our life is also shaped by season. Because from birth until now, we are not the same. We have developed, we have grown, we have matured to be who we are today. And so we have gone to many seasons and stages. So today, wherever you are in life, it is your best season. It is a good student. As a student, as a faculty, as a spouse, it is a good, a good season. Because God is speaking to you concerning your life, He's speaking to you and revealing to you the plan that he has for you. He's shaping you and he's transforming you. And for us, he has shifted us from far, from Asia, from Africa, from Latin America, even here from North America, to be here at Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary to follow me. To be prepared as men and women of God for ministry leadership in our respective communities, whether here in the U.S., or globally, wherever he will send us afterwards. And in the season of preparation, he is challenging us. And this challenge can be frightened because we are looking at our lives, we are looking at the situation, we are calling to experience God. Whether or not the challenge can be in our academics, it can be socially and financially, but God is calling us into a season where he is shifting us, he is stretching us, He's exposing some of the things that we have been hitting, some of the things that we want to deal with. He's exposing the core of who we are. And this is the time he's saying to you, you must surrender to me. You must surrender to me because in this season of where I'm calling you to prepare you for ministry, you have to be the man and woman of God that I've called. It is not about what you want to do. It's who I've called you to be when you're in, mom, in your mother's room. So in this place we come, we are being stretched we are being shifted, we are being challenged, but this is a good place. 
Because God will realize that we are not alone. The Holy Spirit may be speaking to you. He may be whispering to you in a quiet voice. Or he may be shouting unto you and say, I am with you. You are not alone. So heed to my voice. Heed to what I'm telling you. Because this is a place I'm revealing myself to you. And I want to speak on those three major areas. Surrendering, transforming, and relating. The Bible is filled of stories when we look at the leaders, you know, they are faced with opposition and challenges like Nehemiah when God called him to build a wall and all of this opposition start and you just want to run the opposite direction, direction be like, no, God, you're sending me to a people who's stubborn, who's rebellious, you know, who doesn't even want to worship you, doesn't want to acknowledge who you are, but yet you're sending me. I want to run the opposite direction or like Jonah, you want to hide in the fish of the belly. But God will vomit you out because his purpose must come to pass. Or when we look at the lives of King David, how he reigned, but then he was anointed at a young age. He didn't come into power until later on in his life because he didn't do many opposition. And we see David, when, he, when in the face of opposition, he went before God. He surrendered to God and said, God, this is what you have ordained me at a young age when nobody wanted to see me because the prophet they didn't see him. They had to call him where he was. They forgot. They've forgotten about him. Like many of you feel like God has forgotten about you. But he knows where you are. This is a process of surrendering. It is a good place. Because where our flesh is surrendering. And our flesh, we're talking about our mindset. The pride that comes in our securities. The arrogance sometimes that we feel that we think we know it all. The challenges that we face, where we're like, God, what is going on? But God knows and is a place of surrendering because this is a place where we realize that you may be secluded when you're in this community, when you're in your room by yourself, you just want to hide, but it's a good place because this is a place where Moses experienced God in the wilderness. This is a place of, we can be describing of the death place because when we look at Christ, when he was at the Garden of Gethsemane, he had the same experience. Everything that we are enduring, Christ went through it, so it's not, it's not new to him. Because the Bible says in Matthew 26, 38 to 39, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me, and I'm going a little farther. And he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if this is possible, let this cup pass from me, not yet what I want, what's you want, so you come here, you're in your room by yourself. I don't want to be bothered with no one. My desire is for you to say, God, not what I want, but what you want. And then you're looking at the study loads, the workloads, and even for some of us in, in our program, when we meet the languages, Greek or Hebrew, and we say, oh God, I want to run the opposite direction. <laughs> but God says, you know, you have to love your enemies. So when I look at Hebrew, <laughs> I say, God, I'm believing in you. Because you say, I need to love my enemies. If Hebrew is standing as an enemy, give me the grace to love it in the name of Jesus. And so you may be here as a staff, as a faculty. You're saying, I don't want to deal with those students. I don't want to teach them because they are rebellious. They want to challenge everything that I say. You're probably considering career change. <laughs> you know, we're like, no. Or you may be saying to God, questioning the call. Because I see when I was here, I, I wrestled, I said, God, you, you asked me, you fooled me into doing this MD when I wanted to do the MAR. So I want to run the opposite direction because I don't think I'm fit for ministry. I'm not fit for the assignment. You may say the same thing. Whatever assignment God is giving you, you're unfit. But it's good to be unfit because God is the one who's shipping us to feed us to what he's called us to do. So we were reminded again when he said, yet not what I want, what you want. And so he went a little further, and he threw himself to the ground. So I believe this is a language where he may get a friend or two or someone, and they started praying, and God prayed. And so if God is, has prayed in the face of opposition, so who are we not to pray and cry out to God? When we are wrestling, when we don't know what to do, this is the time to pray, to seek God. Because we know God answers 
We read in the Psalm 34, I cry out to the Lord. The righteous cry out. We're not standing on our own righteousness, but we are standing on the righteousness of God. When we cry out, that the Lord answers us and delivers us from all our troubles. We are not alone. God is with us. And so this is the place where you are, you are rooted and you are grounded in God because we need to be firm. We need to be unshaking, unwavering. We need to have roots. We need to have depth because when we leave this place, what are we going to stand on? We need some roots because the enemy will come and sometimes it comes like a flood. It comes to the wind, but we have to stay in the name of Jesus because we have been grounded and rooted in prayer. In Christ, our solid rock, the cornerstone. And so we are realizing that our flesh must die, but our spirit must be awakened in the spirit of the living God. The Holy Ghost must be ignited again in us, reviving us to know his plan and for us to stand in God's will. And so the next stage as we go in, the stage that I would like to say is the stage of transformation. Because in Luke 9, 9 to 23, it says, if you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Christ was a follower. He followed the directive of the Father to tell him, I'm going to send you here, but then they're going to reject you. They're going to beat you. They're going to break you. You must follow my direction. So God, if God was a follower, we need to follow as well. And so this is a place of transformation. It's a beautiful place because we realize we have been crucified of our flesh. Some of the things that we hold on dearly, our value, our traditions, our culture, all of that must be shaped according to the word of God. And so we need to die. For in Galatians 2, 19 says, for through the law I die, for through the law I die to the law, so that I may live to God. For I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified or have surrendered to Christ. And now I am transformed as a man or woman of God, or seminary and a faculty staff, student faculty spouse, wherever you are. It is no longer I that live, and I, and I use it for myself. It's no longer I, Genevieve, that lives, but because I have died, but Jesus Christ live inside of me. And the, now the life that I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself to me. You need to be transformed, to embrace God's identity, to renew our mind, to receive his love, to believe his word, because, because the enemy will bombard our minds with lies, but we need to know who we are in God. When God says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I have a plan for your life. I knew you before your mommy and daddy came together. However you came to be, you are not a mistake. You are my chosen one. I am with you till the end of ages, and I love you because he came and gave love. So we see his, his love, and we, we start to know who we are in him. And I'm standing before with you, and I share with you briefly my testimony. I have a background in business. I did my undergraduate studies and, and graduate studies here in Boston. And so I was working in the corporate world for many years. I was comfortable. Yes, I was a believer, but I was not following Christ. I wanted to do what I wanted to do, and I wanted to wait to do. I was rebellious. <laughs> yes, that was me. I will say that. But then in 2013, God wanted to change and shift the trajectory of my life. Earlier on, did I know I have my mentor who told me, God, you know, Genevieve, God wants to use you. He wants you to be a preacher. You know, and I said to, and I said to her, you know, there's a gazillion people in the planet. God can go pick someone else. Because <laughs> I wanted to do what I wanted to do. And so when, I, when my position was terminated, I did not have a job. I was wrestling. I spent three years unemployed. I was frustrated and crying out to God. I said, God, what are you doing in this season? What is it? You go to this interview. Yes, you have a beautiful resume, but no, we didn't hire you. And so I was frustrated. And so in the midst of my frustration, I became extremely sick when my family was very scared that I might have died. And so the Lord will want to have an encounter with me, waking me up at 3 a.m. in the morning. I did not want to pray. Because I was tired, I was frustrated, I was angry. But then I had to surrender. I say, God, in this season, I don't know what to do. I don't have a game plan, I don't have an action plan. I, I don't know what you're doing. 
but I yield to him. When he wake me up at 3 a.m. almost religiously every day, and I went before him and I cried to the Lord. I said, God, help me. Help me understand what you're doing in my life because this is what I want to do. This is where I want to go. Yet, not what I want, not my will, but your will be done. And so he started to process me. I started to surrender to him, and I rededicated my life to him. I said, yes, I will do it. You want me to be a preacher? Yes, I will. And so he started leading me, and I worked for many years after that uh, as a church administrator. And so even then, that was a challenge because when I got my first paycheck, I wanted to cry. Oh, I wanted to cry. But then I had to yield to God in the season. He sent me to mission. He provided for me. He did all these things, although when I was looking at the paycheck, I don't think I was going to be able to make end needs because it was very small from what I was used to, from my comfort level. He shifted that. But then he said, I'll provide for you. I'll send you. I'll do everything that you need. I did not have any lack, and I thank God for that. And so here I am. I'm standing before you. Is as a result... And my obedience to say yes to God. And he sent me here at, you know, at God in Cornwall Theological Seminary to, to be formally equipped and trained and to be with you and to love on you, to pray with you, to pray for you. It is not what I want. It's what God wants. And we realize in our journey, my next topic is it's relational because God brings us all together. He's the one who reconciled us with the world. He's the one who died, us, who died for us, but then he wants us to be in relationship with one another. I may be inclined to choose who I want to talk to you. I may have the desire to be with certain people, good, but that's not, that's not what God wants. Because it says in Matthew 19, and he sat at dinner in the house. Many tax collectors, that's the IRS agent, you know, or debt collector. <laughs> You know, for some of us, we're dealing with the IRS, and it's like, okay, we're not going to pick up that call. <laughs> and sinners and came and were sitting with him and his disciple. The gospel is a simple gospel, like the song said, but it's a gospel of relationship because God is intentional. He wants to have a relationship with all of us, wherever you are. So I cannot choose to be associated with a certain group of people. I choose to go where God sends me. And wherever he sends you to be friends, to connect, to relate, to pray, to cry, to dine, it is well because he wants us to be engaged with one another in relationship. So we cannot come here and want to be alone. We cannot come here and think that, you know, this is what I want to do. This is who I want to be associated with. It is where God is sending you and who he is connecting you with. Because we must understand our connection is not only for this purpose, for this season, but is building lifetime connection. So that at the end of this journey, in this season, that those friendships, those relationships will still stand. We still count on them. You may need somebody to pray with. This is a person that you call. This is someone that you can share. We can be intimate with. And you can cry with as well. Because many of us do a lot of that lately. And say in this community, we desire to be intentional. We desire to be, we need to be flexible and accessible. And there's some of us who doesn't have any children, and I know many families are struggling, but some of you may be my children because I'm a little bit older than you and wiser as well, I'll say. <laughs> I'll use wiser, not the older part. <laughs> so when we connect and I'm able to share my experiences with you, these are the mistakes that I've done. These are the things that God has brought me through. These are the good, the bad, and the ugly, yet they're all there. But at the end, it is good because we serve a good God. And so we are invited to follow Christ, to connect with all people, different faith, different background, different stories. But when we come together, we, we share our stories. And that's the beauty of the gospel, that we share our experiences and we learn from one another. So today, I would like to ask you, are you a follower of Christ? As you're here in seminar, are you following God's purpose for you? Because he said to Matthew, follow me as an individual, as an institution. Are we following Christ? Because we understand the model that Christ gave us is a model of love, of justice, of kindness, of mercy, and of reconciliation. So are these practices and teaching evident in our lives? 
It is part of our identity, of our normative that we hold on to. Some of you are very addictive to coffee or tea. Can this be part of your addiction to say that, yes, I want to show justice, love, and kindness, and mercy? Can this be an, ad an addiction to you that you want to have? Yes, because God gave his life, and he came, and he did all of that, and he followed. So we can do the same. We are encouraged to do the same. And so when we're looking at the beauty of creation, as, ministry, as future leaders of ministry, how is your heart? Because God said everything that he did was good. Nothing was bad. So how is your heart? How would you describe your heart weight? Is your heart tender? Are you concerned with the matters of God? Are you concerned about what's going on in this world, in our community? Are you concerned? Because for many, at many times we realize that we want to do what we want to do. We want to be intellectually savvy, but then at the same time, we are spiritually numb. And if you were to leave here seminary today and be spiritually numb or dumb, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to diminish anyone, it will not be a good, it will not be a good thing for you. Because you need to have some experience where God speaks to you. And wherever you go, when you are talking to someone, when, you're, when you have a, a, a relationship with someone, you're able to speak out of that and to give life to this person, to speak life into the per, in this, this person. So you need to be spiritually awakened. And of course, we may want to put God to the side and focus on our study because some of us want to do PhD work and so forth. And I say, God, if this is your will, let it be because right now this is not in my agenda. But even to that, you cannot be so focused on your studies that God becomes second. God is your side dish. It is not a side dish. It's the main dish because he's the God of creation. He is all. So we need to be balanced. We need to shift our priorities and put God first, wherever you are. He's the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Every knowledge that you're receiving comes from him. Every insight that you get comes from him because he's all-knowing God. So he cannot be aside and when you're focusing on your studies and then you forget about God. No, let's get our priorities straight. And even as a, as a, as a school, and I know Dr. Price laughs and, and makes jokes when we are in the all class project of reconciliation, you know, when we look at this campus, we shall see all creation being reflected. Can we, we need to come to a place where we are crying out to God, God, remove the veil, we, whatever it is that is hindering us for, you, for us to, to see your purpose, for us to see your beauty in, in our faculty, in our staff, in our board of trustees, board of directors. We need to see all God's creation being reflected because that's God, that's who God is. He created man in his image. And it was good. It was beautiful. And so sometimes we want to we wanna, we wanna, we wanna do man's way. We want to create committees. We want to do things. We want to do our decision based on statistics. But sometimes we need to come in and get a few people to pray because we realize that the enemy is after our lives. He was after Christ's life to kill him, and he did. But he was, by the grace of God, amen. And so we have a demon on the loose that will try to come and kill and steal and destroy our family, destroy our churches, destroy our communities, destroy the nation. But we need to come as a community. We need to come all together in prayer and to say in the name of Jesus because we have a God who answers. We know a God who delivers because when the righteous cry out, the Lord heals them and delivers them from them all. In my season where the enemy wanted to take my life, God had to step in and say no. And so God will step in your season for you in any shape or form, whatever you're dealing with, whether it's sickness, disease, you know, whatever it is, your marriage, your mental health, whatever it is, God is going to step in and say, no, not this one, because I have a plan for his life. Because I know the way that I'm taking him, and he needs to fulfill my purpose. And so nothing is too big for, her, for God. Nothing is too small for him. He's a God of all. And so we come and we say, God, in our season, wherever we are, this is a great season. This is our best season because we are, we are realizing this is a season of surrendering. This is a season of transformation. This is a season to be relational. And so as fellow seminarian, I encourage you. I am quoting from A.J. Gordon with his vision an assignment is that 
We are equipping men and women in practical religious work so that they may bring Christ to all the world, bring the center of intellectual and spiritual formation for all whom has God called. And so we come here, we're standing on the harvest of great men and women who have, who have followed God, who sacrificed, who surrender, who has transformed, who has relational to come and to build this community, to build this institution that we all have come to learn, you know, to love one another, to experience one another, to be changed with one another. So the, in Matthew 28, 19, he said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I commanded you, and remember that I'm with you. The mandate has not changed. The purpose of God and the will of God will not change, but we may need to, to change so that we are able to follow him. Go and follow me. May God bless you.